the Stuart 7A model steam plant part 3. Fitting a new valve rod to the engine and checking the valve timing. The reversing gear operates a slide valve and the slide valve is in this steam chest. The first thing to do is to remove the steam chest cover. This is held in place by six nuts on six studs. A quick word of warning when doing a job like this. It's not too bad disassembling the engine, but when I put it back together, please bear in mind that these are only 7BA bolts. They are very small and very thin, and very easy to strip or shear off. So don't put too much pressure on the job if you're assembling an engine. In between the steam chest cover and the main steam chest is a gasket anyway, so you don't need to really torque these bolts up. I've seen some horrendous examples in the past where studs have been stripped and then a fake bit of stud with a nut on it has been super glued in the hole. Most of the time this is down to inexperience. If someone's used to working on full size devices like motorcycle engines or car engines, then yes you would use a torque wrench to really tighten the bolts, but not so on a miniature steam engine. Inside the steam chest is a gunmetal slide valve. This controls both the admission and exhaust of the steam. The driving bar looks to be a slack fit on this valve, and it's supposed to be. The slide valve needs to float freely in the steam chest, it's only the pressure of the steam that holds it in position. The main problem with this valve rod, apart from too much thread at the bottom end where it goes onto the fork, is that the top part of the thread won't let it travel any further than you see here, and that's not enough travel. This clip shows the new valve fork fitted to the old valve spindle. Supplied with this engine were some extra valve rods, and the one at the front of this image is the one that I'm going to use. As you can see in this clip, the valve spindle is just a little bit too long, because I don't want it to stick through and foul the expansion link. And so in the outer part of the workshop, I'm using my 1 inch belt sander to just shorten the thread very slightly. So that when I put it back together this time, everything should be a perfect fit. In this clip it looks like the valve spindle is a bit short, but it isn't, and that's because the valve fork isn't tightened onto it. And here's a good tip for tightening valve forks onto spindles. Put the spindle in a drill chuck, and then use a barco spanner in the way that I've shown in a previous episode, to tighten the valve fork or clevis onto the valve spindle. A few viewers write in and are very critical of me using an adjustable spanner, but this is not just any adjustable spanner, it's a barco. And the other reason for using a barco adjustable spanner is the width of the jaws. In the small size of the valve fork, a spanner would not be very good. Because this part is so small, the jaws of a standard spanner would be too thin, and would probably mark the brass or gun metal that the clevis is made from. Because a lot of this valve fork is threaded, I can't just push it into the valve gland, so I'm screwing it in there and that way the valve packing material won't be damaged. Moving down to the bottom of the engine, it's now time to set the eccentrics in the correct position, or at least the approximate correct position. I'm fixing them in position with the grub screw, with the flat side of the crank web corresponding to the largest lobe of the eccentric. Back up to the top of the engine, I'm having to physically hold the expansion link in the approximate position so I can rotate the crankshaft and move the valve up and down. This is only approximate because I haven't put the die block in place yet. I will adjust it later on once the die block's in place. I'm just having a look to see what the valve travels like. Because if these parts are not made correctly, then the valve event's never going to be right. But luckily on this engine, like everything else about it, it's well made. In the first episode, I showed a collection of parts from the tin. And in the top right of the picture is the basic piece of metal that's going to be trimmed to be the die block. Carefully trimmed it to the right size because it's far too long in its original state using my 1 inch belt sander. And here you can see it in position once it has been trimmed to size. It's always a good idea to make sure the die block is not too long and doesn't hit the internal part of the expansion link as the expansion link moves across it. Here I'm using a needle file to centralise the die block so I can put the bolt in there. Normally I would use a scriber, but as my scriber is a very dangerous piece of equipment, when I packed everything for the move I put it somewhere safe so I wouldn't impale myself on it. That's why I can't find it. Having said that, I do have quite a lot of boxes yet to unpack in the workshop. 
Here's a close-up shot of the valve travel now. The edges of the ports look a little bit raggy, that's because they're cast in, but it really doesn't matter, that is unimportant. As you can see, the valve still needs some adjustment. It's uncovering the top port a little too much, but not uncovering the bottom port enough. What I need to do is remove the bolt, remove the die block, and rotate the valve rod anti-clockwise to allow for the valve to be centralised over the ports. I thought I would take this opportunity to apply some oil to lubricate the moving parts of the reversing gear. It is essential that this expansion link, the steel part, slides very smoothly from side to side over the die block. If you rewind and look at the valve fork you will see that that's been filed at either end so that it doesn't foul at the top and nothing's fouling in the middle. The expansion link slides very freely all the way across the die block at any position of the crankshaft and this is what I need it to do. Time to look at the other parts for the valve gear. Now this doesn't look very good does it? They're really rough at the end but the main thing is the holes are in exactly the right position relative to each other. This is the part of the valve gear that moves the expansion link from side to side. And as it moves the expansion link, it also moves the eccentrics from the forward eccentric to the reverse eccentric. And once I've drilled the four small cylindrical pieces and fitted them into the holes, the edges of these parts will be rounded. You'll see what I mean in the next episode. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.